What is up, everybody? Thank you for stopping in to talk a trio of dynasty trades involving David and Joku. If you want to go ahead and skip to the first of the three deals, by all means, not offended. Uh, but before you get there, uh, I want to let you know my name is Chu. You can check me out on Twitter and, of course, here on YouTube at Father Dynasty. Uh, jumping over to David and Joku, so having a tremendous year, uh, finishing up with 12.6 fantasy points per game. Compares very closely to George Kittle at 12.7. I think we've, we can all agree George Kittle has had a tremendous season as well. Uh, not quite the yak monster as Kittle, but he is second behind him in 20-plus yard reception. So again, definitely has been a downfield threat. And all of that, despite the revolving door at quarterback there. Uh, he is finishing up with career highs in targets. This is his first 100 target season receptions yards and touchdowns so again tremendous tremendous season for david njoku uh someone who athletically i think we are we're always hoping he's going to put it together and finally has um not an unrestricted free agent until 2026 and is still only 27 years old so again i think when people talk about tight ends kind of hitting their stride figuring it out then maybe it's more 25 26 but again with his athleticism you know Comfort in the offense, clearly. And again, him having been able to do what he did with a number of different quarterbacks, especially as most, as most recently uh, Joe Flacco. Uh, so I, I, I trust what he's uh, got going forward. So keep trade cut. Value him as the tight end 10, one behind Jake Ferguson, one ahead of the Bears' Cole Komet. I have him ranked as the tight end 8. Um, I trust it. I mean, you know, what he did this season, I think it's it's been building and building to this. And with Deshaun Watson coming back and healthy, presumably they're paying him so much money. I don't know where else he can be. Um, you know, I don't know if the Browns re-signed Joe Flacco as to become a uber high paid backup. And if you need him, that's fantastic. You know, I think Joe Flacco is going to be very sought after, sought after after uh, what he did this season. Uh, but jumping into the first of the three trades, so twelve team start ten full PPR and half point ten in premium. So we've got, this one's pretty interesting, David Njoku for Tucker Craft and Jamison Williams. So I have, let's see, I think I have Jamison Williams on one, two teams to this point, two dynasty teams. Didn't really pay tremendously high for him, I think. He was more than a throw-in, certainly, but, you know, if you consider his draft capital and everything, I don't know who still has faith in Jamison Williams as anything of what we thought he was going to be in that Lions offense. And that's even despite, I know Amon Ross St. Brown's there. I know Sam Laporte is there. you got Jameer Gibbs there. You know, David Montgomery. Like, there's there's more weapons than just him. I get that. But I, it seems like he's just relegated to be a deep ball, deep ball guy every now and again. You know, I think it has a couple of touchdowns this season. But, again, thus far, just not what we thought he was going to be uh, in the NFL. But, on this, I'm taking the David Njoku side. You know, I like what Tucker Craft has done in the absence of Luke Musgrave. But that's the that's the big part of it, is in the absence of Luke Musgrave. And I don't really know that I see Kraft overtaking Musgrave, a healthy Musgrave. I also, I like the weapons, uh, the pass-catching weapons that Green Bay has. Jaden Reed, love the talent. Dontavian Wicks, love love the talent as well. I think he should be, you know, over Christian Watson. You know, Chris, because that's a good problem to have if you can have those guys working on the outside and Jaden Reed on the inside, uh, or just you know, in motion really as just a weapon. Again, they've been feeding him the balls of running back too. So again, overall, a lot of good weapons there. But I trust David and Joku to continue to be a downfield threat for the Browns, and that's just going to be the case. Jumping over to the second deal of three. 12 teams start 10 full point PPR, half point 10 in premium. Uh, this is, and I've, I've found a lot of Justin Herbert ones lately. So we've got Justin Herbert and David Njoku for Jameer Gibbs and Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson's another one. Uh, you know, I, seeing what Brees Hall was able to do with the Swiss cheese offensive line, the, you know, star quarterback going down immediately in the first game. And then the revolving door of the Zach Wilson, the Tim Boyle, all that. Pretty incredible. Uh, pretty incredible that uh, Garrett Wilson was able to do that as well. And, and Jameer Gibbs, of course, 
I understand it's the backfield where it's him balancing with David Montgomery. Jameer Gibbs is still a tremendous talent, and we all know that. Justin Herbert is my guy. Again, he's going to be hip, have another head coach at this point. I mean, he could have another offensive coordinator. I would assume he would, but I don't know. David Njoku, though, I uh, trust his talent. Again, this is a half-point tenant premium. Doesn't mean much, really, at all. Not really until you get to the, you know, say, one and a half, two. Uh, but, again, a good player to have. And, of course, the only quarterback involved in this is Justin Herbert. So, for me, I'm taking the Justin Herbert side. You know, it is tantalizing to get Jameer Gibbs, again, explosive weapon. Garrett Wilson, looking forward to when he actually has a competent quarterback next year in Aaron Rodgers. But taking the quarterback, this is super flex, if I didn't mention that already. So that's a big reason why I need I need a huge reason on the other side to to go against a top 10 quarterback in Dynasty. So I didn't get it. So going Herbert and Njoku. Jumping over to the third of the three deals here. 12 team start 10, full point PPR, half point ten in premium. This one's weird. Uh, I would love to know how this one came about, just with a couple of these kind of weird pieces thrown in here. So we've got Trey Lance, Evan Ingram, a 2025 fourth, 2026 third, and 2026 fourth. All of that for David and Joku. With a lot of these, you know, because I don't have the context of this is what my team looks like. I accepted it. It started out here. I don't have any of that context. I don't have, you know, it's really just kind of looking at these completed ones uh, on the trade finder or trade database, excuse me, on dynastydaddy.com. Not my website, just a cool tool I use. And did I see Trey Lance thrown in there? I mean, I don't know. I have no idea. But, you know, Evan Ingram, again, on, on the other side there, that, you know, the thirds and fourths, whatever. I'm still taking David Njoku. It is a 12-team start 10, so there's you know a little, a little bit of depth there that's necessary. Trey Lance gives you no depth. The fourths and thirds, I like those. I do like those as throw-ins. Um, but again, two of them are not till 2026. It's David and Joku. I mean, that's just a clean way of you've cleared out a roster spot. You dumped a couple of later picks. None of them are even in 2024. Um, so you get David and Joku. Maybe you still have some of those 2024 picks. So again, I mean, this is uh, a pretty simple one for me. And let me know what you think down in the comments on any three of these trades. Uh, nothing too crazy. And I know David Njoku isn't, a, you know, a premier top three tight end or whatever, not the Kelsey Andrews type guy. But again, he's a, he's a rising talent. I think he's cemented himself as a, a clear cut top 10 dynasty receiver at worst top 12. Um, so yeah, let me do, let me know down in the comments what you think about these trades. Agree or disagree. Let me know if you maybe have recently done a dynasty trade involving David and Joku or have one in the inbox. Not sure. Want to talk it out. Love talking dynasty trades any day, every day. So please go and drop it down there and happy dynasty.